My was a brought up in Ork in the village. Loads of the village, 70% of the village was related to fishing. My father was a fisherman and all my forebears, grandfathers, uncles, they were all fishing. I had quit my job, started fishing, wasn't from a fishing background, didn't know anything about fishing, uh, didn't know how to tie knots, splice rope, you name it. Never been on a boat before. My first memories are of being on boats with with my father, um, with him diving for scallops. And probably at the age of eight, maybe nine years old, I would be in, you know, in charge of the boat while he was diving. You know, and having dived for the first time at 12 years old, I don't think there was anything else I wanted to do. It's something I've always done. I grew up growing things. I've worked in farms of all sizes shapes and sizes, um, from hundreds of acres down to a small garden. And I think I'm getting towards the point where I'm happy with the scale that I'm at. I'm a complete newbie to this. I'd never driven a tractor before I came here. And we've had particular help from three neighbours, all of whom were in their 70s. We have some local customers, but in general, they don't tend to be able to pay the prices that we need. To, to make this business viable. We supply daily 60 to 70 restaurants probably and hotels within the London area. The Highlands is unusual, about 20% of the whole economy is made up of, of small, tiny, micro self-employed businesses um, and a lot of them work. People know how difficult it is to run those and they support each other. Um, yeah, I started out with eight customers and now I have a hundred. There's 100 customers. Um, and we deliver that food directly to 200 people. I was giving them access to a product that was unavailable to them before. Now we supply about 300 hotels and restaurants all across the Scottish Highlands and Islands. It was not just, it was too, the restrictions was keeping you back. It was a worry. A lot of skippers was getting pretty scunnered. But they kept doing and what they had to do and did all the best we could for conservation. Primary motivations are partly to do with wanting to get really fresh food. We're in the Highlands, we're a long way from distribution centres. Because, I mean, we go to restaurants ourselves and it, the salad comes out and it's sort of a few wilted leaves and you can see it's been in transit for maybe a week. We pick it and deliver it on the same day. Our chefs expect, they're paying a high price for the product. They expect that product to be as it was when, when the diver picked it off the seabed or when it was taken from the prong creel in the boat in the west of Scotland. So people sign, subscribe to a um, subscription box of fresh fish delivered to your door within hours of being caught. Like last year I grew 35 different types of vegetable and within that 35 types of vegetable there'd be lots of varieties. So maybe 90, 90 different things. Uh, we have 80 different species that are landed in Scotland. We actually grow about 80 different varieties of, of vegetable, um, but we sell it all within 20, 30 miles um, of the croft. But thankfully, things are recovered now. The North Sea, so they tell me, is loads of fish. Our method of fishing for scallops, um, by, by diving for them, we don't cause any damage whatsoever to the seabed. We can be extremely selective in picking the scallops from the seabed. I have a hay field, which I cut for hay, and then I feed the cattle hay, and then their dung goes in a heap for a couple of years, and then I feed that dung to the soil. And then the soil's healthy, and the bacteria in there, and the fungus in the soil feed the plants which feed us. 
the roads were that tight for conservation and quotas, it was hard to, a lot of people had to start throwing out fish. Because it was hard to, hard to understand how we would, we, everyone hated throwing out fish. If we could get other people to, to use our um, business model, we could utilise the fish at the market more effectively, meaning that there's no need for discards and there's no need for landfill. I also need to be learning something. You can't just stop. You can't. I think if I got to a level where I wasn't learning anything or doing anything different, then that would be the time to go and do something else. I like looking at these problems. I like thinking about these problems. And I like trying to make a difference to these problems.